Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Devin Henry over here at Deed. I am filling in for my colleague Alicia, who you, who you may be used to seeing on this call. We're excited to talk about this month's job numbers uh, with Commissioner Matt Barilek and our labor market information team. Uh, as a reminder, please mute your phones. Uh, let me know if you have any questions either in the chat or by raising your hand once we get through uh, once we get through the presentation here. And we will go from there. Um, with that, let's go ahead and get started. Commissioner. All right, sounds good. Hopefully I'm unmuted. Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks, Devin, for that introduction. And thank you all for being with us today for a look at the June employment data. Since this is my first time joining you all, I wanted to start off with just a brief introduction as well for those that I haven't met yet. So I am Matt Verilek, and I was recently appointed by the governor and lieutenant governor to serve as commissioner at DEED. And my first day in the role was exactly one month ago today. So this is how I chose to celebrate with all of you. Um, and I'm actually a you know, past consumer of this uh, information and call. And so now it's exciting to be uh, on this side of it. So I've had a lot to learn at DEED because the agency does so much, but fortunately the team at the agency is very strong and has been efficiently bringing me up to speed. And then I come to the organization uh, after having served about six and a half years as president of the Initiative Foundation, which is a partner of DEED and uh, provides loans, grants, and leadership training in 14 counties and two native nations of central Minnesota. And then before that, I was at the um, U.S. Small Business Administration for about four years, most recently as the Chief Operating Officer. So now moving on to the June employment and jobs numbers that we are releasing today. The big news is that another 9,017 people have joined the labor market in Minnesota. With those new workers, our labor force participation rate has increased two-tenths of a percent to 68.4 percent, and that compares to 62.6 percent nationally. Minnesota's unemployment rate remains steady at 2.9% in June, so same as the month before. Uh, and that also shows that most of the people who joined the labor market in June found jobs. Nationally, the unemployment rate ticked down one-tenth of a percent to 3.6%. Uh, even though our labor force numbers increased, Minnesota lost 4,300 jobs in the last month on a seasonally adjusted basis, or 0.1%. The private sector in particular lost 6,500 or 0.3%. In the U.S. as a whole, we gained 209,000 jobs in that same period or up 0.1% with the private sector gaining 149,000 jobs, also 0.1%. However, over the year, uh, job growth in both Minnesota and the U.S. are up 2.4%. Uh, so with that, I'm going to hand things off to Labor Market Information Office Director Angelina Wynn, who you know already, for a deeper dive on the details. Thank you, Commissioner. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to jump right in here. So June job growth happened in seven super sectors, and they are government. Uh, the biggest growth uh, gained 2,200 jobs, or 0.5%, with the strongest growth in local government subsector. Trade, transportation, and utilities gain 1,200 jobs, which is 0.2%, with the strongest gain in retail trade. Financial activities gain 800 jobs, or 0.4%. Other services gain 700 jobs, or 0.7%. Construction gains 600 jobs, or 0.4%. Information gain 200 jobs, 0.4, also 0.4% growth. Educational and health services gain 100 jobs, um, which is a real in percentage uh, terms, 0%. Mining and logging did not change over the, the month, so still remaining at 6,500 jobs in Minnesota. Uh, four super sectors lost jobs, or sorry, three super sectors lost jobs, uh, and they are leisure and hospitality, um, lost 5,300 jobs, which is a uh, decrease of 1.9%. And this super sector has had strong growth, uh, you know, recovering after the pandemic, and it's starting to find an equilibrium point, a more balanced, sustainable level of job growth. Uh, the largest loss over the month was in accommodation and food services sector. Professional and business services, um, that super sector lost 2,500 jobs, which is a 0.6% decrease. Uh, the sharpest decline was in administrative and support services. Manufacturing lost 2,300 jobs, which is a 0.7% decline. 
um, and the loss was spread evenly between durable goods and non-durable goods manufacturing. So overall, we saw a net decline of 4,300 jobs over the month, uh, seasonally adjusted. Uh, May job growth, so the month prior, uh, was revised downward by 800, which is a 0.03% change. Um, so the final estimate for May growth is still um, a positive 6,900 jobs uh, gained in May. So looking at the longer term, job growth has been consistently positive and we've recovered almost all jobs lost due to the pandemic. Um, and our job level is back to where it was at uh, in March 2020. Next slide, please. Our labor force size grew nicely over the month, uh, so that's good news, uh, adding more than 9,000 people, which is an even bigger increase than last, last month's growth and marking the fourth month in a row of positive growth for our labor force. Um, so as of June, our labor force size is 3.11 million people. Uh, the number of employed increased by 7,544 and the number of unemployed increased by 1,473 people. Labor force participation rate inched up by 0.2% to 68.4%. Um, it's been hovering around 68% for a while, um, and it remains higher than the U.S. rate by almost 6%. Um, it's but still a little, a tiny bit lower than our pre-pandemic rate of uh, around 70%. Next slide, please. So here we look at over the year growth uh, by super sector for both Minnesota and the US. So over the year, Minnesota gained almost 71,000 71, jobs, which is a 2.4% growth rate. Our, our private sector gained 58,000 jobs, uh, which is a 2.3% growth rate. So for comparison, uh, the US non-farm uh, total grew 2.4% over the year, and the US private sector grew also 2.4%. So June over the year growth in Minnesota is on pace with the national rate, and that is good news. Uh, most of the sectors posted positive annual growth in our state, um, and some even outpaced the national rate. So, for example, uh, education and health services led the largest over the year growth. It's up um, 24,090 jobs, which is a 4.5% growth, with all super sectors posting solid growth over the year. Leisure and hospitality was uh, second, uh, up more than 14,000 jobs, which is a 5.2% growth, and all subsectors under uh, leisure and hospitality experienced positive growth as well. Uh, government grew almost 13,000 jobs, or 3.1%, and all subsectors also post posted positive growth except for state government education. Uh, trade, transportation, and utilities gained uh, more than 8,000 jobs, or 1.5% growth, um, and all subsectors grew except for wholesale trade. Um, construction gained 4,209 jobs, almost 3% growth, and the strongest growth was in heavy and civil engineering construction, which saw a 10.5% growth, which is huge, um, and that uh, means net growth for the entire super sector, despite a small dip in residential building construction. And lastly, information grew 3.2%, um, gaining 1,426 jobs. Only one super sector lost jobs over the year, and it is financial activities. Um, it's down 687 jobs, or a 0.4% uh, decline, due to um, a decline in credit intermediation and related activities even though we saw positive growth in real estate and rental and leasing. Next slide, please. And lastly, um, we are looking at wages. So average hourly wages for all private sector workers decreased 91 cents uh, over the month in Minnesota uh, to $34.29 an hour. But over the year, it increased 17 cents or a 0.5% growth. Um, Many super sectors that are sorry, many sectors that we follow since the pandemic still see positive wage growth. Um, so, for example, manufacturing production workers saw 6% um, wage growth. Construction had 9.2% uh, wage growth and finance and insurance had almost 6% wage growth. Um, some sectors, on the other hand, um, have seen zero wage growth over the year or even um, negative wage growth for, for production workers. So like transportation and warehouse um, had a decline of 7.2% or uh, ambulatory health care uh, saw no change in, in wage growth over the year. 
Uh, nationally, the private sector wage decreased 28 cents over the month, but it increased 3% over the year. Um, inflation rate is now um, at a much better place than it has been. Um, as of June, the inflation rate is 3%. Um, so overall, it's a mixed picture for wage growth by industry, but overall net positive growth. And that is all I have. Devin, back to you. Thank you, Angelina. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, we'll now take any questions from the press. Yes, Renee, go ahead. Hi, Commissioner. This is Renee Richardson, Brainerd Dispatch. Hey, Renee. Uh, hey, uh, congratulations on the job. <laughs> Thank you. What uh, we continue to hear from local employers and from just general perception in the public is that there's a lot of part not workforce participation that people are still staying out of the workforce, maybe because they're early retirement or some other reasons that they're not available to work. Do we have any data that kind of shows what that group of people represent, how many people maybe took early retirement, how many people started their own jobs, how many people just left the workforce and haven't returned? I can well, I would look to our, yeah, our experts uh, to share the details on that. Uh, what jumps out to me, though, as I look at the numbers, is just noting the fact that Minnesota's labor force participation rate is uh, well above the, the national average. And I, as I watch national trends as well, I think the great resignation is fading or, or has faded. We're even seeing voluntary quits uh, decline. And so to the extent that that was part of what was going on, uh, I see it fading now. And Angelina, I would love to get your perspective on it and what uh, data basis we may have for that. Yes, thank you, Commissioner. So our, our state has an uh, aging workforce and that's been the trend for for decades and we've been expecting that you know we would see more retirements um, around this time and um, so pre-pandemic the labor force participation rate for Minnesota was around 70 percent and um, with the pandemic you know prompted um, earlier retirements more retirements um, we saw a dip in women um, dropping out of the workforce because of child care um, issues or taking care of uh, sick family members, but the recovery has been good. Um, our labor force participation is still, like the commissioner said, much higher than the national rate. It's been increasing over time. Um, it's now at 68.4%, which is a good point to be, even though it's a little lower than pre-pandemic uh, of almost 70%. Um, but that's expected because we do have an aging population. So. Um, Every month, oh, well, this is the, the fourth month in a row that we've seen um, more people coming back into the labor force. And the biggest growth um, of that is due to women um, coming back in and um, black workers as well. Um, does that answer your question? Yes, that helps. Thanks. Uh, what would be considered full employment? Is there a percentage where we kind of think this is full employment for our community, for our state? So from an economic perspective, um, the natural unemployment rate is around four to five percent. So that is um, kind of the the uh, healthy point uh, for an economy because we will always have, um, you know, people transitioning between jobs or people um, uh, not working. So right now um, with our unemployment rate of 2.9 percent is actually a, a, a tight labor market. Um, we have more job vacancies than we have unemployed workers looking for work. So um, we are actually past the point of, of uh, a, a good balance. Um, so it is actually a, a uh, job seekers market right now and um, it's a very tight labor market. And just as one more follow up, I'm sorry, go ahead, Commissioner. Well, I was going to say, and I see we have a couple other folks with questions too. Sure. And so not to belabor this, but uh, given that uh, the unemployment rate is so low, and I'm sure you've seen this already, but a big focus of the department is on workforce development. And in fact, just this week, have done a couple of events with the governor featuring opportunities in some uh, 
high priority sectors, and he, I believe, is in Duluth today uh, with public safety folks featuring the great job opportunities in that sector. Thank you. Thanks, May. Let's go to Jesse, and then we'll get Brian's question in the chat. Hi, Angelina. Could you tell us a little bit more about what might be behind that average um, annual, uh, or I'm sorry, average monthly dip in wages? You know, um, usually what I would recommend from a data perspective, uh, we look at long term trends to uh, see like what real change is um, over the month. Um, it's it's natural that data goes up and down. Um, I I don't have an explanation for for why um, wage growth for this month is a little uh, lower than than other months, but it's still overall a positive uh, 0.5 percent. Thanks. And that might go to Brian's question in the chat. He asks, why do you suppose wage growth in construction is stronger compared to other sectors? Um, I don't have a, a firm answer for that. Um, Oriana Cameron, any thoughts? Well, I have two thoughts. One is that construction is um, really trying to hire um, and trying to retain people um, and they are partly doing that through wages. Um, another thought I have is that we only measure uh, wages for all employees, so that includes um, management, um, people who own the companies. Um, and so we, in other sectors, we measure production worker wages. So we don't have a measure of those production workers in construction. So that could be um, slightly inflating the wages. Those are my two thoughts. Thank you, Ryan. Let's go to uh, Dana next. Hi, um, I'm wondering if you can talk about what the state is doing or what the state can do to bring down the unemployment rate even further below that 2.9% figure. Well, I would say at a high level, all of our efforts around workforce development are aimed at helping folks who may not be in the right job. So that could be people who are already employed, but then also folks who are on the sidelines, helping them become aware of opportunities to join the labor force. Um, and then also providing opportunities for training to get the skills that one would need to actually fill those jobs effectively. So at the department, we've been talking this week about one of those programs in particular called Drive for Five, which does put an emphasis on particular sectors, which we could talk about. And then in addition, that is just one of several workforce development programs we have. Drive for Five is new as of the last legislative session. Uh, the same is true for targeted populations program. So that's one that instead of focusing on sectors, focuses on people. And then we have a number of other programs as well. And just as an example of uh, something that I got to be a part of last week with the Lieutenant Governor, we help to announce $7 million in grants to nonprofit organizations that are helping to bring young people into the workforce and help them with career exploration, how to do interviewing, how to do networking, and uh, all those sorts of things. Yesterday, uh, we were at a school and the governor taught a class and elevated just what a satisfying and, and middle class opportunity it can be to serve as a teacher or other roles at um, uh, in the education sector. And so those are all the kinds of things we're trying to do to make sure that every Minnesotan has an opportunity to learn about the, the wonderful opportunities in this economy, because we have such a diverse economy. Almost anything you would want to do, there's an opportunity here in Minnesota. And not sure if any colleagues would like to add to that. Let's go to Quinn next. Commissioner, you mentioned, um, you know, kind of the, the events that you've been going on with the governor and the lieutenant governor. Um, 
highlighting a lot of these investments. When do you guys expect those investments to really start, um, you know, kind of materializing and paying off? Is it more of a short term thing or, or do you guys expect to see the impacts of these like in the years to come? Well, I would say it's already ongoing in the sense that it's not that we only started focusing on workforce development as a result of the last legislative session. I mean, this department has been focused on this issue for a long time. I credit the state chamber with uh, uh, alerting folks, maybe even decades ago, to the fact that we would see some of these demographic changes that Angelina noted. And so we've been working diligently with others for a long time on these issues. And so I would say that's part of what has brought us to this point right now. However, uh, in the last legislative session is when uh, we finally were able to make some historic investments at a scale that uh, exceeds what we had before. So that's positive. But when you already have a very low unemployment rate as we do, that means it's a little harder to make progress. And so um, we would expect that uh, these historic investments are going to be impactful, but on a you know smaller share of the population. And so disentangling how much this program made the difference vis-a-vis -vis what the employer is doing, vis-a-vis -vis, uh, what the individuals are doing, that is hard. But I think there's no doubt when I go and see the young people at Right Track in St. Paul who are learning about uh, these um, interviewing skills and learning about the cool sectors that exist and that have high demand for workers, it's hard to imagine how that couldn't be uh, impactful. And so we will just now have an opportunity to multiply those kinds of experiences for more folks. Thanks, Commissioner. Thanks, Quinn. Any other questions from anybody else? If not, I think we can wrap it up, Commissioner. Well, thank you all for being with us and thank you for the great questions. Uh, thanks to our team again for preparing these data. We're happy to see some of these positive trends continuing and look forward to helping to drive further progress. Have a good day, everyone.